morning, everybody, and welcome to Ask the Expert, an award-winning daily series from 8.30 to 9 a.m. to help small businesses. You can ask any questions during the live in the comments, or you can use the hashtag QBATE for Ask the Expert on Twitter. If you need any more advice during or after the live, you can join the official Intuit QuickBooks SMB community group on Facebook, where accountants like me and business experts are on hand 24 seven. So during the live today, we are going to be running a poll. So please do engage with it and I will be revealing the result at the end. So my name is Rachel and I am the founder of Accountancy. So we are a female led accountancy practice and I personally specialize in working with female entrepreneurs and business owners. Um, I also specialize in working with influencers and I have written a book, The Tax Guide for Influencers. So just diving into my speciality a little bit. Um, so I, I specialize in working with women in business and at the moment in the UK, one in three entrepreneurs are female. However, in the last 12 months, women made up 60% of the newly self-employed category, um, which is really, really exciting. So it means we're sort of clawing back um, the gap and across the globe, the share of women among small business owners has reached nearly 40%. And whilst we're still not quite at 50%, that is up from just 4.6% in the 70s. So it's an industry that's growing really, really rapidly. And from there, we can split the fact that women aren't evenly represented in business into two separate avenues. The first part are the reasons that actually stop women from being business owners. And the second is actually ensuring that the wider outlook of women in business really changes and that people, not just women, see that there are key benefits of having women in business on a micro and macroeconomic level. So if we speak just quickly today, um, just while I'm waiting for some questions to come in on the different reasons why women aren't becoming business owners. And Forbes conducted interviews and studies into the difficulties that women face when starting a business. And they were able to cite lack of guidance, imposter syndrome, and access to funding or finance as limiting factors. So Accountancy was founded um, on that basis. So we were founded with the goal of being able to actually take those three individual points and to provide female business owners with either solutions or support. So access to funding and finance, um, at the moment, only 7% of private equity and venture capital, capital is invested in female-led businesses. And statistically, female-led businesses will only receive 65% of the funding received by male-led businesses. And the reasons when people investigate this are cited as gender bias during the investment process, incorrect assumptions made by investors about female-led businesses and that there are actually just fewer women in positions of seniority at influential firms. So at Accountancy, we empower women to thrive and not just survive in their business. And we educate them about self-funding business models and methods. And we also partner with lots of different banks and female-led banks specifically um, who are committed to the Women in Finance Charter. So the second barrier to entry to women and being um, business owners is business guidance. So we educate women about their businesses and I am currently halfway through studying my MBA, so a master's degree in business. And I'm really able to apply and teach and put all of the enthusiasm that is covered in the modules of my MBA and really coach my clients through their businesses. Um, the second thing that we do to tackle the business guidance piece is that we offer free training to all clients. So any client that we take on has a one to one with us um, and that can cover anything from just a business chat, a cash flow forecast, QuickBooks training or any other software training. And we really do that to ensure that the knowledge gap is no longer a barrier to entry. And we're just empowering clients to like take control of their business finances. Um, so the final barrier to entry for women in business is cited as imposter syndrome. Um, so if you've ever felt like you don't belong or that your friends or your colleagues are going to discover that you're a fraud and that you actually don't deserve your job or your accomplishments, that's imposter syndrome. 
Um, and the technical definition of imposter syndrome is the idea that you've only succeeded so far due to luck and not because of your talent or your qualifications. Um, so I work really closely with my clients to help them rationalize these thoughts and to have open conversations as a fellow female business owner um, about identifying those feelings. And, and we work together to sort of recognize their achievements in a much more positive way. Um, so I am the author of the Tax Guide for Influencers, and I just wanted to touch on it really briefly. Um, so we have created an all-in-one resource for anybody who generates income from their online activities. Um, it covers everything from what counts as income to the law of de declaring paid posts on social media, um, what are allowable expenses, um, including how to reclaim the cost of the book as an allowable expense, and a step-by-step -step guide running through how to complete a self-assessment tax return. So just moving on to um, the COVID pandemic and what support is available to you guys. Um, the impacts of the COVID-19 have hit the economy incredibly hard, but I think something that we've seen as accountants and as business owners is that there's been an undoubtable opportunity for innovation, creativity and growth. Um, so we've seen huge pivots in businesses, people bouncing back, people using this time to take stock of what software they're using, moving over to QuickBooks, um, and just really taking the time if they're not growing to enable growth in the very near future. So there's been a spike in the number of people interested in starting their own business and um, lots of people looking for new and different ways to diversify their income, maybe while they've been furloughed. Um, and, and there's a lot of people, and we're seeing a lot of people looking to solve new problems that have come to light as um, a result of the global pandemic. So I just wanted to touch really, really quickly on the different schemes that are available to you. Um, they have been released. Obviously, we're, we're, nearly at the, we're nearly coming out of lockdown now. So um, I'm sure everybody knows exactly what's available to them. So I'll just cover them very briefly. Um, we have the extended furlough scheme, um, which is amazing. And that is pretty similar to what happened before um, with a few minor changes and it does cover flexi furlough obviously the dates changed it was March it's now October so it's it's open to many more people than it was before which is great um, yeah and flexi furlough is a part of that again for businesses that are sort of able to run um, new or adjusted timings flexi furlough is an option which is great um, bounce back loans are still open, still available, and the deadline for that has been extended into January 21. Bounce back loan top ups have also been released, which is amazing. So the current um, threshold for bounce back loans is that you can either have 25% of your turnover or um, up to £50,000, whichever is lower. So if you took out a bounce back loan back in April or May and you've not quite hit the cap of 25% of your turnover, or 50,000, you can reclaim in order to make the most of the um, percentage that's available to you. Um, and then SEISS, they have now confirmed that it has been extended and that the um, third grant is going to be 80% of your tradable profits. And um, applications for the third grant do open up on Monday. Um, so get ready to apply for a Monday and they are going to remain open um, up to, so you have to apply um, on or before the 29th of January, 2021. Um, so I'm going to make a start on some questions that have been coming in. We've been getting some really, really good questions. So the first question I've got is from Jeff and it's come in via Twitter. So thank you for your question, Jeff. And Jeff has asked, I'm an accounting student and what is the best way to practice and understand QuickBooks? So we, um, Within our firm, we've just taken on our first trainee. So we've been helping him through this process. And um, QuickBooks offer amazing training online. Um, as an accountant and as an accounting student, you can do your training to become a certified QuickBooks advisor, which means that you um, QuickBooks give you a little badge to put on your email signature and on your website to basically showcase that you have been trained in QuickBooks by QuickBooks and that you understand. So, um, 
even as a small business owner, if you would also like some training, um, that's available to small business owners as well. So there's lots and lots of training and support on QuickBooks. There's also lots of people. Um, Aaron Patrick is very often on Ask the Experts. So he's a familiar face on here. So Aaron actually runs um, the QuickBooks chat on YouTube where he... Um, but he prepares videos guiding people through uh, little fiddly twiddly bits on QuickBooks and um, really, really shows people the ropes. So I would definitely encourage you to, um, if you don't want to do the full QuickBooks training, maybe check out Aaron on YouTube where he can show you the ropes and you can become a bit more familiar with QuickBooks. Um, so I hope that answers your question, Jeff. The second question has come from Alia and it's come via Facebook Messenger. And she has asked, I started a new grocery delivery business four months ago. I've already invested my bounce back loan in the business. How can I raise more funds without depending on support schemes and funds? Um, so the first thing I would recommend that you do, Alia, is just to establish whether or not you have fully utilized the bounce back loan. Um, if you obviously I just mentioned that if you haven't claimed the full amount within the bounce back loan, there is now the top up service. So you can make sure that you've utilized as much. Then if you don't want to rely on support schemes and funds, um, there's a couple of different options. Um, there's lots and lots of grants, local grants that are available from local councils, really, really to encourage the economy to grow and flourish now. I think grocery delivery businesses are amazing. I would love to know where you're based and to like find out more about this, but I would definitely consider contacting your local council to see exactly where they're at with supporting local businesses to flourish. Um, and the second thing is a lot of people dismiss um, the option to grow organically and to grow naturally within the business. So to utilize the cash that you do have and to reinvest that into infrastructure to support your business to grow really, really organically. Sorry, the pun with the grocery business, but to grow organically. Um, so hopefully that helps. But I would love to chat to you, Alia, um, if you have some time after this. Uh, but I hope that does answer your question. So I've had uh, a question from Twitter, from Natasha, and she has asked, is working with female entrepreneurs a different experience? What kind of advice do they usually need? That's a really good question, Natasha, and I do actually get asked this quite a lot. Um, I absolutely love specializing in working with women. Um, I think women do need a different experience than men, especially, I think the, the, the first thing to, to mention here is that it, across 2020 and the build up to 2020, I think the role of the accountant has changed and um, the, the, especially the role that we accountant she and our wider company Strivex, we aren't just accountants, we are business advisors. Again, I'm doing a master's degree in business. So the experience um, that I'm able to offer personally through this company is really, really sort of like door to door. It's not just accounts anymore. So I think that really helps with female entrepreneurs and as a female business owner, um, being a business owner can be very, very lonely. And I think that may be something that does affect women more than men. And um, especially during lockdown, it has been incredibly isolating. So to be able to sort of be an accountant, be a business advisor, be a trusted part of people's businesses, and then actually at the very basics, just be someone's friend. So a client can ring me up uh, and say, I hit 10K this month and I don't wanna brag about it to anyone else because everyone else is having a really, really tough time. I'm the person that those people are able to go to. And I think that's amazing. So I think to be able to provide a much more thorough level of support and sort of handholding through this process, has been amazing and I think as I'm not just an accountant I am also a business owner so be so to be able to like have that connection with people from day one there's sort of like a mutual level of respect and understanding between us which I think as women is really really lovely um so I feel like I digressed a bit sorry Natasha but hopefully that um that answers your question um so we've had another question come in from Twitter and that's coming from Memphis and uh, they have asked, I haven't claimed the SEISS grant until now, so I'm waiting for the 30th of November. Does the tax get deducted at source or will that have to be paid later? So the SEISS grant is taxable income um, because it's a grant and not a loan. It doesn't get deducted at source. You do have to either, if you do your self-assessment tax returns yourself, you have to um, trade it. You have to pop it through as taxable revenue. Um, but if you have an accountant, 
of course you can um if you're in quickbooks you can pop it into a separate line on quickbooks and ask your accountant to do it um little plug for the new tagging feature on quickbooks you could also flag it as ask my accountant and they can help you with that too so it is tradable income it's not deducted at source so i hope that helps you memphis um we've had a Another question come in from Instagram this time from Leon. So thank you for your question, Leon. And they've asked, good morning, accounting for influencers seems like a niche. How did you come about the idea of focusing on this niche? Uh, again, a question that I guess get asked all the time, but it's one of my favorite questions. Um, so again, in terms of um, the accounting for influencers, it's definitely sort of like a personal interest of mine um, as as a young woman that, that uses Instagram, it's definitely like a personal interest of mine. But then again, I am doing the MBA. So I've learned a lot about strategy and um, market positioning and learning to grow your following. So I've been able to apply a lot of the skills that I've learned through my MBA into this. And it was actually that that really helped my positioning. So um, there's actually not many other accountants based in the UK that do specialize in working with influencers. I absolutely love working with influencers and with women in business. So it kind of seemed like it went hand in hand. Um, Instagram is an amazing, amazing platform for anybody to grow their business. And I'm a real, real advocate for that. Um, not even just as an accountant, but um, to, to have moved into Instagram as a professional service much sooner than a lot of other people have has given me a lot of competitive advantage so if you search accountant on instagram i am the number one that comes up so that's really really helped my positioning within the market so um i think yeah my positioning and working with influencers sort of happened naturally it's a personal interest of mine whilst also giving me a competitive advantage within the field um and i think there's a really big um wider piece here on niching and how fantastic niching can be for your business so by specializing working so i personally specialize in working with women and with influencers and that doesn't cut me off to anybody else i still work with everybody else and we have a wider limited company with lots of men on the team so um it doesn't cut me off to any any of the other revenue but having a speciality can really help build trust and awareness within that niche so i think um, there's a much wider piece there on niching and how fantastic that can be for a business. Um, so we've had another question come in from Instagram and it has come in from Casper. Hi, Rachel, you have successfully used social media to grow your business. Are you able to get direct leads on social? And if so, how? Again, very, very frequently asked question. And it's something that I'm super excited, passionate and happy to talk about. So um, I post and I'm very active on all forms of social media. So LinkedIn, um, Facebook and Instagram, and we are moving over to YouTube in the new year. And Instagram by far has been the most amazing way to get leads. I cannot even express enough how fantastic it's been for business. We get, um, Instagram is the number one lead source for accountancy and we get I can't even tell you, I, I get so many DMs a day asking if we're taking on work, whether or not people are willing to work with us. So um, yes, social media has massive impacts on our business and we do get many, many direct leads on social media a day. So, um, and I think, again, that's really important for professional industries to sort of learn and be aware of. Like, I think a lot of people wouldn't think an accountant would be able to generate leads from Instagram because Instagram isn't the place for accountants. Whereas actually the basic model of a sales funnel, the first step is awareness. And as, um, as a firm that is able to create awareness and drive change and move away from a stereotype, to be able to put our name out there um, and have people feel like they're a part of our team just by being a follower and an onlooker, it's planting seeds in people's minds and it's really creating a connection. And I think when your social media is organic and it shows personality and it shows really the sort of like integral parts of your business that you're really proud of, that is a really natural transition for people to then, if they're ever in a position where they need to reach out and contact you, it sort of seems like natural that they do so and they feel like they already know you. So Social media is and can be fantastic for any industry, not just um, professional services, but I would say that having an authentic, organic 
social media is very important so that people don't like get lost along the way and that the person posting is also the person replying to the DMs and then is also the person holding the calls and the meetings with clients. I think that's very important. And that's something that um, we've done since the very beginning. And it's like all of the social media is run by us. We don't outsource it. So I think that's also really important. Um, so the next question has come in from Twitter and it's from Ariana. And she has said, can I continue keeping some of my employees on furlough after the lockdown ends? Yes, the answer, Ariana. So um, the furlough that's currently in place has been extended up until March, and that hopefully is after lockdown ends. So the answer is yes. Again, if you need any more advice, um, please do get in touch with either me or join the um, Intuit SMB Facebook group. Um, Miles from Instagram has replied to our Instagram stories and has said, is lack of confidence a sign of imposter syndrome? Um, yes, Miles, it is. I think lack of confidence really is, um, I think it's something that impacts people of all genders in business. And um, I've not always been self-employed. I was employed before, um, before this. And it's not just business owners. It really does impact everybody and I think lack of confidence affects everybody in different ways, but it can be a massive sign that you are experiencing uh, imposter syndrome because it's your brain kind of saying, you're not doing a good job, you don't belong here, people are gonna find out that you're an imposter. So um, yeah, so I hope that helps you, Miles. Um, okay, so Alexa has asked a question on Instagram. Hello, can you help me understand invoice discounting? I have researched online, but there's too much jargon to understand. Um, so great question, Alexa, but the answer is very, very technical. And I think we've only got nine minutes left, so I don't think I've got time to get into it. Um, but again, please do connect with me on um, socials. I would love to explain it to you offline, but it's a very long and technical answer. So I don't, <laughs> don't want to um, take up the rest of the time. Um, Okay, so Cyril from Facebook Messenger has asked, I run a dropshipping business along with my day job. While I started the business in June, the sales have only started in August. Will I need to file self-assessment tax return for the side business? Okay, good question, Cyril. And again, very frequently asked question. So the tax year runs from the 5th of April to the 6th of April each year. So um, there is an allowance that you can take advantage of which basically until your turnover reaches a thousand pounds, HMRC consider it a hobby. So um, when, if during the tax year, your income from your side business um, goes over 1000 pounds, you will need to complete a self-assessment tax return. And um, each year in your employed income, you will receive a P60. So you need to pop your um, taxed income from your P60 onto your self-assessment tax return. And then on top of that, you will also need to, to declare your untaxed income, which has come from your side business, um, populate that into your self-assessment tax return, and then HMRC will tell you how much tax is due. So I hope that answered your question. Um, we've had another question come in from Twitter and Carmen has asked, do you have any advice or tips on how to speed payments from clients? I started freelancing earlier this year and this is my biggest challenge. Um, really good question, Carmen. So I think this is something that affects all industries. But again, with freelancing, I imagine you are offering a professional service. So and I think also it can be quite difficult, like when you're just starting up, it's quite a dif difficult topic to like broach with clients, approach with clients. And if you're anything like me, you can feel like a bit awkward trying to broach that at the very first step. So Something that can really help, and it's something that we do as well, is using direct debits. And um, the way to pitch that to your client is that direct debits help them. It's one less bill to pay. It happens automatically. And you are protected by the direct debit guarantee, which means that um, you notify them that you're going to collect the payment. And if they're not happy, they can put their hand up and say, I don't want you to collect it. And they don't. But direct debits can improve cash flow, shorten your um, payment terms and like everybody just knows where they stand. And it also, it almost, it set things off on the right foot. So if, you, if you're engaging with a client, you have maybe a setup call, you're both happy to work with each other. From that point, you can set up a direct debit. It formalizes the relationship. You both know where you stand. And then also from your admin point of view, it's something that you only have to set up once. Um, but yeah, so absolutely direct debit would be my top tip to anybody um, facing 
difficulties or um, like slow payers. Um, again, it's 2020, some people are having um, cash flow problems and actually as somebody that is also running a business, you need to know at the word go, if this person is unprepared to pay a direct debit, they're gonna be a slow payer. Um, and then you know that from the word go. Um, okay, so I've had a question from Mason via Twitter and they've asked, I am a developer working on a prototype for an app. Would you advise approaching a bank for a loan versus going to investors? Right now, I'm just looking for partial funding to cover some costs. Um, so thanks for your question, Mason. Um, there are definitely advantages and disadvantages to both. And a lot of people, um, the benefits to seeking funding outside of a bank are that it's almost a bit more flexible. Um, the downside would be that you almost have somebody else to report to, um, bringing in external shareholders. You don't have to report to a bank each month how it's going, but you do have to report to external shareholders um, if your external shareholders want that. So it is somebody else to sort of answer to, so it can create new problems as well. Um, both very competitive. I would say it does depend on the industry and what size funding you are looking for, but there's definitely advantages to both. So I would encourage you to research both and then make your decision. Um, Kevin from Facebook Messenger has asked, how does working with influencers differ from working with normal businesses? Um, so firstly, I don't just work with influencers. I just have a speciality in dealing with a lot of influencers. Um, I mean, I think influencers are normal businesses is what I would say firstly. But secondly, in terms of um, accounting, um, accounting is the same. There's different rules that surround different industries, but in terms of the role as an accountant, um, it doesn't change too much. And I think actually being able to specialize in something, understand the tax rules, understand the accounting rules, really, really help you to become a much better accountant. Um, so I think from a tax point of view, it's obviously a bit um, a bit niche, it's a bit specific, but um, it, I don't think the way they run their businesses differs too much from normal businesses um, in that, you know, they still pay themselves a wage, they still have to file self-assessment tax returns. Um, the accounting bits are slightly different, but um, I don't think it differs too much from anyone else. Um, Okay, so thank you, Kevin, for your question. That was actually the last question that we have time for today. Um, so the poll results are in and we asked you guys, is your business prepared for Brexit? 69% of you said no, 33% of you said yes. So we do understand that this is 2020 and that Brexit kind of got parked for a lot of people, but... Brexit is approaching very, very quickly. And no matter what industry you are in, no matter what industry you work in, if you are self-employed or employed, Brexit will affect everybody. So you still have time. Um, I think we're 33, 34 days at the moment. You do still have some time um, to get prepared, do your research. If you do have an accountant, reach out to your accountant, reach out to your business advisors and get a plan in place. Um, so thank you so much for having me today. Thank you so much for your questions. I've absolutely loved it. There's been some amazing questions today. Um, and every time I do ask the expert, the questions are like so wildly different every time. I love it. Um, again, if as a result of today, you do have any more questions, then please do get in touch with either the QuickBooks support team or myself on Instagram. You can head to Instagram and search for accountant she. So we are accountant underscore she. I would love to see you on my socials. Um, coming up on Ask the Expert tomorrow, we've got Alex Payne. And Alex is the founder of The Room, a marketplace tech business connecting brands and people of influence. Um, Alex is an experienced television pre presenter and broadcaster and has a strong understanding of the fast changing media landscape and the world of influencers. So you can tune in to Ask the Expert tomorrow to learn how, can, how you can leverage influencer marketing for your business. Um, super quick reminder, I did say at the beginning, but um, if you need any more advice, you can join the official Intuit QuickBooks SMB community group on Facebook. Um, I am a member and I see fantastic resources coming out of there every single day. So I would definitely encourage you to join the group, even just as a spectator. It's amazing. There's some really, really good content that comes out. So um, 
if it's accountants like me and business experts are on hand in that group to help you 24 seven. Um, I've really, really enjoyed answering all of your questions this morning. So have a great day.